Well, hello again, Vinyl Community. Today is Record Store Day. Um, as I record this at least, I probably won't be able to get it all uploaded until tomorrow, at which point it will be Palm Sunday. Uh, and I did participate in Record Store Day, fool that I am. This was the biggest crowd ever, I think, at my tiny local store, so uh, stuff disappeared really quickly. It was really a, a mob scene, a lot of squeezing and mm, almost shoving, uh, so pretty unpleasant. I don't like that kind of a scene. But I did, right off the bat, manage to score one of my top wants, which was the Frank Zappa Guitar World, according to Frank Zappa. And this is the first ever vinyl release of uh, an album that's previously only been released on cassette. It was a special release in 1987 through Guitar World magazine, a mail order item, and they show a picture of the actual cassette on the back. Uh, as the title suggests, this emphasizes Zappa's guitar work. It's all instrumental pieces. A lot of it is material that had not been previously released at the time. Subsequently, it's uh, pretty much all come out on various releases, apart from there being a, a remixed version of an excerpt from uh, revised music for guitar and low-budget orchestra that um, hasn't otherwise seen release. And this is on a slightly milky, clear vinyl. And the other album that I managed to score was the release by Gong, Live at the Bataclan, 1973. Uh, this was originally released in 1989 on the Mantra label. And once again, we're on colored vinyl with disc one. I've already put this in uh, disc keeper sleeves because the uh, printed inner sleeves that it comes in are just very, very staticky. I haven't listened to it, but I've already put it in the archival sleeves. And this um, looks like opaque pink vinyl. If you hold it up to the light, though, it's marble. It's very, very cool looking. I don't think you can quite get that translucent effect on the camera, but I'll try. I'm holding it up to the dying sunlight here. And the second disc is a lovely translucent green, much the same shade as the album Paleozoic. Yes, I wore my Paleozoic t-shirt to Record Store Day. Uh, not that anybody noticed, but it was there uh, empowering me. Okay, other items received recently. Popol Vuh, Coeur de Verre, from 1977. This is ostensibly a soundtrack for one of Werner Herzog's movies, Heart of Glass, Herzog's Glass. Um, there are uh, versions of this with the German title, this is the version that uh, I used to have, the French ver French title. This is on a French pressing on the egg label. And actually, most of the music is not from the soundtrack. Um, it's just that Florian Frica used to use the uh, Herzog soundtracks as a bit of an excuse to release whatever he felt like releasing at the time. So I believe... Only two tracks from this are actually from the movie soundtrack. Um, I did see the film back in the day. It was a very odd movie where I understand that Werner Herzog hypnotized all the actors. So they performed under a trance and um, it was a bit catching. I showed uh, last time a Triumvirate album. Well, here's another one. This is their second album. I think I said that uh, Spartacus was my favorite. This is so close. This might be my favorite. Maybe this is my favorite, too. Illusions on a Double Dimple from 1974. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> You've got your uh, rodent theme once again. And uh, this is... 
unlike the other one, on the same label it was released in Europe on Harvest. Excellent progressive music. Um, again, in uh, a, a substantial influence of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer showing. Maybe not quite as blatant on this one. Uh, also, Mississippi John Hurt, 1928 Sessions. Um, a while back I showed uh, an album from Mississippi John Hurt's uh, 1960s comeback. Well, this is the original stuff. I noted that the uh, the remakes that he did in the 60s were a bit weak by comparison. This is the real thing, dubbed from the old 78s. This is on the Biograph label. And when I got this, um, somebody, some previous owner had taken like an inch wide strip of cellophane tape and resealed the album in a sense. And it took me like the better part of half an hour working with lighter fluid, X-Acto knife, and Q-tip to get that goo off. Uh, the tape itself came off completely clean without any of the adhesive, which all stuck to the sleeve. And it wasn't old and dried, it was soft and gooey. So I have to put a little effort into it, but the sleeve looks so much nicer because of it. Another Anthony Braxton album. This to me is the, the beginning of his classic run of releases on Arista. Uh, this is a promotional copy, a uh, white label with a sticker on the back. This was his first album for Arista, and they deal with his unusual diagrammatic titles on the label by simply listing them as cut one, cut two, cut three on each side. Uh, this is an album of two parts. The tracks on side one, the cut one, two, th two and three, are all by the quartet of Anthony Braxton with Kenny Wheeler on trumpet, David Holland on bass, and Jerome Cooper on drums. The second side uh, this is a lot like the Oliver Lake album I showed, where he, he had the straight combo on side one and uh, got a little more experimental with the arrangements on side two. Side two of this begins with a duet between Anthony Braxton on clarinet and Richard Teitelbaum on the Moog synthesizer. It goes on to a... Um, a quartet with Braxton on the E-flat sopranino saxophone, Julius Hemphill on alto, Oliver Lake on tenor, and Hamiet Bluyet on baritone. So it's basically the world saxophone quartet, only with Anthony Braxton instead of David Murray. And finally, cut three is probably my favorite track on the album, a magnificent composition. Rather solemn with Anthony Braxton on the contrabass clarinet, um, Kenny Wheeler on the muted trumpet, and this is the same combo as on side one, but with the addition of Leroy Jenkins on violin. So it starts off as a sort of chorale with uh, Braxton, Wheeler, and Jenkins all playing together in their assorted registers. This long, lugubrious theme before going into the improvisation. Sort of spacey back cover. And Dave Holland again, and also a follow-up to a re another recent acquisition. This is volume two of the duets between Sam Rivers and Dave Holland. In this case, Sam Rivers, who played uh, soprano and tenor saxophone on volume one, this is again uh, two side-long pieces. This time Sam Rivers plays flute on the first and piano on the second with uh, Dave Holland, of course, on bass. Once again, this is on the Improvising Artists Inc. label. And finally, I seem to have shown quite a lot of records lately by Krzysztof Penderecki. This is one I found, uh, found it sealed 
on the Mace label, very low budget label out of New Jersey. Uh, the record was packaged without even an inner sleeve. Um, I, I, if I remember right, Columbia used to release records without inner sleeves on their real low budget line uh, at one point. So this is on the green Mace label and it is in Stereo Monic. This record provides both stereophonic and monophonic sound reproduction. So you know that something's going on, but I have no idea what. Uh, most of the music by Penderecki that I've shown lately has been in his religious vein. This has some of that. It's got uh, his first published piece, The Psalms of David, for chorus and percussion, and the uh, a setting of the Stabat Mater, the rest of it is his instrumental, early instrumental compositions, and that's really very enjoyable to me. He gets pretty wild on these. He got a little more subdued in later. I shouldn't say he, he got, he has gotten. Uh, Kzhishtov is still with us. Um, so I found this a really enjoyable piece, not the great, uh, really enjoyable album, not the greatest pressing. Um, they cheap out a lot on this label, but hey. And they got, uh, again, some classic artwork by Angra on the cover. So that's it for this time. Thank you all very much for watching. I think I got through that without even having to do any edits. I'm going to leave, even leave the coughing in. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you all uh, who participated enjoyed Record Day, and I hope all of you who didn't participate enjoyed Record Day, perhaps even more. So be well, and I'll talk with you again later. Bye-bye for now.